hello hi everybody welcome back to my homestead here in hawaii on hawaii island in the puna district where it rains all the time well not lately at least we've been in quite a drought it's been two or three weeks with any real real kind of rainfall here and so most of our tanks are kind of dry most people are getting their tanks filled by water companies us here though i have yet to do that in 18 years of living here today i am going to show you how to set up uh the tank for being pressurized when I, whenever i used to install tanks people would be so quick to install the rainwater tank but they never called me back to actually get the water out of the tank i don't know what they ended up doing for most of those guys like i think they just never had a plan I worked at a permaculture training center um, for a time and we installed a couple rain tanks there and even there we would catch that rainwater but never really have a clear plan for sending it out afterwards. One year we just sent it out into a swale during the rainy season. We didn't even use it all summer long. So it's very important to remember to how you're going to use that water after you catch it. So today I'm going to show you a very simple way to pressurize your water tank system so that you could send it anywhere you want. Before we get into that, please, please be sure to hit that like button just right down there and subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're trying to make it better every day, trying to add new content to help you grow and to become an off-gridder and less reliant on the system and more reliant on your own skills. So please. Join us, follow along, comment on this video, and let's see how we're gonna pressurize this water tank back here. Okay, this is the inside of our tank. You can see the liner, the metal frame that holds up our, um, our sc screen that's on top. And wow, look how low we are. This is considered low. Normally, when it's uh, normal rains, the water tank never gets uh, more than an inch down from the top. But look where it is now and we conserve water. So, I'm not worried though, because that's still a lot of water in there, and I got a kiddie pool that we can draw from. Okay, so let's get started. Let's find the source of our outlet. So here we have a one inch pipe with a foot valve on the bottom, if, if you could see that. It should be raised a little bit off the bottom of the tank. I would go a little bit higher than it is there, maybe two, three inches off the bottom of the tank would be good. But you can say that it goes up the tank and then out of the tank. It has this little spur right here. This is sort of like a primer. Sometimes the pump kind of messes up and you have to reprime the pump so you could unscrew this, fill water into it and be able to get water back into the line and reprime that pump that pump so we also then we come out of the tank and we have this valve here on off valve to shut off the water it just comes and leads back underground here and over to our little pump house that we have located here you can see the water line coming here this is sort of like a little primer valve that once in a while you have to unscrew and kind of repressurize this is a sort of um, a source of a occasional problem that happens with the pump from that from time to time but it's really easy to fix you just unscrew it you prime the pump back there um, where I just showed you and then it should pretty much start up as long as your pump is still in good working order but then I lead it inside this little box here I just made this little box outside and this is where it houses my uh, pressurizing equipment. So here we are. This is inside the box and we have our pump and our pressure tank. Let's get a little closer. So you can see where the water comes in from the outside and goes into the pump. Now this hose is something that you could buy at Home Depot. The pump, if you live in Hawaii, I got at Inner Island Solar Supply. They exist on all the islands, I believe, or at least Oahu and, and Hawaii Island. 
And so the pump is hardwired to the solar system here. You can see this um, electrical wire is coming from the solar system and it is powering this pump. Occasionally you can find hardwired pumps where it already has a plug outlet or you could even wire that yourself if you have a plug available nearby. But this is how we did it. We hardwired ours directly to our electrical system. Okay, and then here it's where it goes into our pressure tank. So we have a T that leads directly into the pressure tank. It's just a male fitting. There is, um, you can't quite get under there. There should be a union. A union can allow you to disconnect all the all of this piping without having to cut the pipe or anything and there at that union junction on the other side of the union is a male fitting that then fits onto this pressure tank here and so the pressure tank pressurizes the water system and it it goes into out this pipe this is the outlet i have a spare pump always key to have on hand but it goes out goes out of the box and to here where I have an initial hose for the garden it doesn't get filtered at all um, and then it just leads up to where I have my pressure gauge and my initial filters so these are my filters here I have uh, these pleated cartridge filters and then I have this string filter I believe the cartridge one is in here and the string one is in here. You want to do the one that has um, larger, a larger micron number first and then a smaller micron number. And then if you were going to make this water drinkable, uh, at this point over here is where you would add your UV water system. This is what we have to filter our system. Uh, it doesn't make it drinkable, but we use it for our dishes and showers and and it pretty much everything else besides drinking um, So when the water is not in use The pressure tank holds the pressure at a steady point. It ranges between 20 and 40 psi and Once it gets to 20 it kicks on and once it goes up to 40 it kicks off so that why right now the water is in the pipe it is not moving anywhere so it's static and the pressure is being held in the tank right here waiting to be used so just beyond our filters so i'm giving you a little more than pressurizing just pressurizing your water to go in your house so at this point you're ready to go you don't even need those filters that i just showed you you saw earlier on the hose spigot there that's pressurized. That's ready to go. If all you need is pressurized water to get a hose um, running um, with pressure, boom, you're ready to go. But if you are going inside the house, it's best practice to have some sort of filtration before actually using it. Especially out here in Hawaii, we do have issues. We have mosquitoes in the tank that cause some sort of disease occasionally. As long as we maintain it, we can minimize them. But we also have the risk of rat lungworm disease. And we're, no one's too sure on whether or not it gets transmitted through the water. But just better be safe than sorry. And so when it's getting on our dishes or when we're taking a shower, you know, some of that water gets in there. And you just want to make sure that it's really clean if you're using it inside the house. Um, in addition to your filters, just making sure your roof is clean, your gutters are clean, you have some sort of way to, to filter the water before it gets into your tank. At our tank, we use a pantyhose filter on the inlet of this pipe here that you see on the wall right here behind me. That goes straight into the tank with a pantyhose filter. It filters out almost all the gunk and debris that can get into the tank. And twice a year, I go in with a pool vacuum and I get the gunk that's on the bottom. But otherwise, that tank is clean before it even gets into our water system here. And that's key. You want to make sure your water is, is as clean as it could be every step of the way. All right, so let's go on. I'm going to show you how we hook it up to our hot water now. And then it, from there, it runs to the rest of our house. Let's check it out right now and see, see how that works. Okay. All right, so here we are at um, the filters here. And we're going to move on. Behind this box is our hot water heater. 
We have a screen for rats to get. Oh, well, you can see that screen burned a hole. So obviously it gets hot. What's more important is this metal flashing that's around here. Make sure that you have some sort of metal flashing on your wall. There was a one time when this water tank caught on fire. And if we weren't here to catch it, our house could have been gone. So be careful. You can see how hot it does get from the outside. Um, in fact, you don't really even need this box around it. We just did it to try and deter any theft because we weren't around very often. But here we go. So this here is switches from PVC to copper pipe. And you can choose to go ahead with copper pipe or you can continue on with PVC. Let's follow along here. PVC, this is the inlet pipe and it's coming up, the cold water is coming up into the hot water tank right here. It just screws in to the inlet valve right up there. That's the inlet. It even says so on the screw there. You just um, plumb your PVC pipe or copper pipe directly into that. And we also have it teed off because the rest of this pipe provides the cold water for the rest of the house. It goes on from there. And so over here is the outlet. Okay, right here, this pipe, the outlet pipe. This is always better to be copper. It withstands heat better. It's hard to install copper. So you can do CPVC which is another type of a uh, PVC pipe, which is really easy to use and can withstand heat. And people say that even typical normal PVC can also handle the heat, but I like a little bit of uh, space between uh, PVC and the hot water heater. So starting off with copper is the way to go in my opinion. So you can see it, it starts off there, but it has a T. And this T leads to this overflow with uh, a emergency vents in case the water gets too hot or there's too much water in the line it can drain out out here it's an emergency stopgap measure but they have this emergency relief valve at home depot they sell it there it's easy to find but then from down here the hot water just goes goes out to the house so that water line goes to the shower the laundry the sink everywhere you're where you'd have hot water simple as that let's run over to my mom's house i just built her a new house over next door and i installed a rainwater catchment over there so let me show you a little bit of a similar system but her system actually has drinking water so let's go check that out all right so i'm at my mom's house here and you can see behind me she chose the option of having the fully enclosed plastic tank she wants to make sure her water is as clean as possible for because she is drinking this water now so she went with this tank and it's pretty good i don't know about the plastics if i was going to go with a drinking water tank i'd like it to be uh, an all stainless steel tank or ferro cement but you know that costs a lot of money this is a great affordable option um, for carrying water i think it's uh, about a 3,000, 5,000 gallon tank behind me and uh, for one person with a flush toilet uh, and a washer in there she's uh, able to manage pretty well but you can see this tank um, the inflow the inlet water oh yeah 3,000 gallon tank the inlet of this tank is up here that's where the water gets in we have this um, clear tube to show where the water level is which geez it's pretty full so she's doing pretty well compared to me with kids we're always, uh, you know, running the bath and, and just playing in the hose. So that's where our water went. But you can see the outlet with the red valve. That's what's leading to her house. The inlet there has a clean out right there. It's um, important to do. It just pops underground here real quick. And you can see the larger pipe is coming from the, the roof, the gutter system, and the lower pipe leads to the pressure tank under the house. Pretty much it's the same setup, except the pressure tank is a little further away. It's under the house. I'm not gonna go under there since I showed you mine, but from that pressure tank, it comes to these filters, and then it actually runs through these filters first, and then it leads to, not to the hot water tank, but it goes, from this pipe here, it comes back around to this system. 
this is a little control to show how much you're using but right here is some sort of special filter I didn't install it myself but most times to make water drinkable they use UV filters this one is a special sort of cartridge filter I believe that requires no extra power and since we're on solar that's what we're using and that's to make the water drinkable and so after it runs through there just runs back over to here which is cold water still and it runs into the tank and it also runs as cold water back into the house here so into the tank the cold water goes in the hot water comes out and here I wanted to show you the CPVC we did use a metal bushing but then it goes to CPVC instead of copper pipe and it has the 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 vent valve here which runs down to vent out any excess heat but then this pipe here runs back under the house and to wherever you're gonna need hot water pretty simple system here's the hot water heater and we just have the gas hooked up from here to a propane tank down here and uh, the power for the hot water system right here is um, connected to a plug that goes right here and we wired this plug specifically for the hot water system that's running right here this hot water system has been working great well it heats up within minutes and uh, it stays hot which is amazing how these things work I'll never know why they had those big huge ones to begin with I hope you learned a little bit about pressurizing your water tanks and even getting them heated and even to the point of being drinkable it's uh, something that um, is easy to do here in East Hawaii a lot of people are harvesting their rainwaters and filtering it to the point to where they're able to drink that water um, otherwise you're heading to the county spigots down on the highway that's what I do Till next time we'll see ya aloha everybody